So the Harkin World module was created by Doratine, and it's kind of an intro to his um, project. So it's a classic party-based adventure. Create up to six characters and add them to your party. I've played in I played this before with four characters and it's a little bit more challenging so you can play with either four to six. I have some pre-made characters already. Um, I'll go ahead and create a new character just to show the process here. So let's come in here and we'll call him Good name. So we'll say Derek. That's a name. And we'll do an elf, male. These are the four classes that are kind of the standard ones. Dorotin created this other class called an archer, it's a custom class for his project. So I'll try that one out. Let's choose a portrait. These are all just a bunch of portraits that Doratine has included with his project. Do this one. I'll pick a, let's see, that one looks appropriate. Okay, let's go ahead and give him some high dexterity. That's good. Strength a little bit. Some constitution. Um, and next, let's give him some. Give him some diplomacy. And. So this character is kind of a hybrid between a, somewhat of a fighter type and a little bit of spells. Looks like he comes with a flame finger spell at the first level. Okay, so let's have Derek be, let's have this fighter be our first guy. Derek will be next. Eris is a cleric, and then Valoria is a wizard. We'll play with four people. Okay, so if you right click on any of these, we can switch the token out, and that will be your new party leader as well. We'll go ahead and have. Lock Trump can be our party leader. And also, if you left click, it'll bring up character sheet. Shows some. There's no weapon right now. Skills, traits. Guys, dodge. Spells, flaming fingers. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So you'll see here Doratine has um, some tile-like maps that he's created. And a lot of his graphics are very uh, reminiscent of some of the gold box games. I think he got a lot of his art assets from the Forgotten Realms Unlimited Adventures community. Frua. The Gray Walls of Castle Harkenwald soar into view through a chill mist that has yet to burn away. Towering stonework, which seems more mountain than fortress, climbs in a natural rocky state, reaching for the crenellated battlements. When Kelton Manor was roused to the ground, its refugees fled to this citadel, bearing a fierce look of being unassailable. After a nightmarish ordeal of running for days, you find sanctuary at last in a soft bed and even a plate of warm food. OK, 
Okay, so here we are. We'll go down. You squires sure do eat a lot, just as well. With everything going on around here, you will need to keep up your strength. By the way, the name's Maliski, but you can call me Muggs. No one important, really. I'm only the castle's head cook, but if you need anything to fill your belly, you just let me know. I would think a head, the head cook is a fairly important position. Of course it's an important position. I was trying to practice some humility. I've been told I need to temper my dwarven pride. But don't let your flattery make you think you can get an extra serving. However, if you fancy something different and come across various meal ingredients, just bring them back to me and I will see what I can throw on the, the hearth. Should I find any food that might be cookable, I'll be sure to let you know. It sounds like we've got ourselves a quest there. Keep an eye out for edibles. So we're inside the castle here. Walk around and have a look. Hello there. Have you any rumors to share? I have heard talk of rebellion in Scardale from the southern borders of the realm. Can you believe it? Who are you? My name is Abigail Anthus. I hope to one day become a poet of the court, but I am afraid my rhyme and verse are not very good at the moment. Delighted to meet you. See what we have here. Don't <clears throat> don't touch me. Ah, you are some of the survivors from Kelton Manor. Quite the tragedy. You should be thankful to be alive. Not treat this like an extended holiday. If I were you, I would find some quiet place to meditate upon that. And who might you be? I am Abbot Thespar Wordsmith, and you would do well to remember that. We will try to stay out of trouble. Sounds like a nice guy. So, I don't want to put out too many spoilers here. So I am going to um, go ahead and get the uh, first quest and equip myself and then I'll come right back to this place here. Okay, now we're back. We went ahead and equipped our characters. We have a look here at Derek. He's now got a long bow. Base attack bonus is zero. Our Trumpkin's got plus one short sword. Um, we also, let's see, this our cleric has minor healing spell. And our wizard has flame fingers and also a mage bolt. We can have a look at our inventory as well. See here he's got leather armor and a short sword, leather armor and a long bow, leather armor and a mace, and nothing. Okay, so let's go ahead and venture out castle. Well met, squires. Are you preparing to leave the nest, the safety of the castle? You had best be sure you are ready to venture out into the wilderness. It can be deadly, I hear, and there will be no one to save you. Your concern is noted. Okay, so we can wander around. Also, we can turn the grid on and off, and it shows you which squares are walkable. The red are not walkable. So he's got a little path here. Kind of walk around the path. What do we got here? A man gripped in the desperate madness of fear runs up to you and wails. Gone, all gone. Everything I had at Kelton Manor is gone. 
I am sorry for your loss. So it looks like people are still running. Go ahead and turn that off. Okay, so it looks like we're outside the walls in a forested area. Savage faces emerge from the trees with weapons drawn and murder in their eyes. Goblins attack. So it looks like we've got some goblins here. Let's see, five hit points, five hit points. A goblin archer with six hit points. Over here we got our move order. It looks like one of the goblins going first, then Trumpkin. So it might be pulled down towards the bottom. So we'll go ahead and begin combat. Looks like that goblin went first. He attacked Trumpkin and he missed him. So now I use on my number pad, I can use um, directions in up, up and to the side. So I'd hit the number nine to attack this guy and I'm gonna do that. Also I can turn on the view range, these ones right here tell me my attack range and this larger square is how far I can move. And then also I can turn on the facing, this shows which direction each of these characters is facing. If I highlight one of these guys it shows me his move, his attack range and his movement range is the larger square. This guy can see, can attack almost the whole screen with his bow but I'll turn that range stuff off. I'll leave the facing part on. So I'm gonna go ahead and attack with number nine. Go to the upper right. Attack and hit for four points of damage. He swung at me and he hit for zero. That wasn't very much. Erebus, I'm gonna attack with the number seven. Hit and killed. All right, so now this guy I can attack or I can use a spell. I'm gonna go ahead and use a range attack and shoot at this guy. Hit him for four points of damage. And then here I can use a spell. I'm gonna go ahead and use a spell. I'm gonna do a mage bolt. So I got 12 hit points, 6, 8 still. This guy's got 5, 5, and 5, so they're both the same. I'll go ahead and attack this guy here. And the same there, I'll attack that person. And then here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, attack there. Here, I'm just going to skip. Attack up. Over and attack, and I kill. Okay, it looks like I found a regenerate life spells points. This potion will also give you um, stamina points, either either or. Okay, so let's see. We gained some experience, 227 experience points, probably each. Yep, everybody. And if we look at our inventory, we've got that potion we can use. So I'm going to hit the letter Q for quick save. That'll save the game. Okay, it looks like I've stumbled upon another area. Let's go back down here. and stay on the roads. Hey mates, you work for the castle, right? My boss has been looking for some people to help us out. People like you. He wants to, how do you call it, arrange a meeting in the grove of trees just north at the end of the road. Hmm, 
You seem like a friendly fellow. Lead on. Let's see what this guy's up to. So at the end of the road. Grove of trees. Ah, so you have decided to join us and hear out our pro proposition. But first, allow me to introduce myself. I am called Avon the Blade, and these are my associates. Blarda, I believe you already met. Not very bright, but a disarming gentleman. Wouldn't you agree? Behind me is Hall Five Coins, our accountant. He is very serious about his work. Then there is Felix the Twig, growing in prowess every day with his quarterstaff. And finally, Galleth Redbeard, silent, diminutive, and very good with daggers. Together we are part of an affiliation known as the Raven Roost, and we think that the king has a little too much wealth. While commoners like us must suffer in the wild, this is where you come in. Perhaps we could pull off an inside job. You have access to the treasury. You know, spread the gold around a little, eh? You're under arrest in the name of the crown. Yeah, I didn't like his plan. So what do we got here? Here's Blarda. Galeth Redbeard. Felix the Twig, Avon the Blade, and Hall Five Coins. So it looks like Erebus is going to go first. We'll begin combat. Um, let's go ahead and attack this Blarda guy. Knocked him down with one shot. Great. So Derek, let's go ahead and do a ranged attack and see if we can take out this guy. Okay, they hit him. Let's see if we can use a spell. Let's try Flame Fingers. And this circle right here, it's really just the top three ones that will get a hit. And it looks like Galath Red Beer with Flame Fingers and Burns for three points. So it looks like Galath got burned. So he's got five, nine. So let's go ahead and attack this guy. Trump and missed. He got hit for one. So we're looking pretty good here. Let's go ahead and move over, attack him again. It's got one hit point left. Let's go ahead and let's use our spell that we have. Flame fingers. Let's see how that works. Looks like he burned all three of them for three points of damage. This guy's got six, he's got three. So right now it's not showing friendly fire, but um, in future versions we'll fix that script so it has friendly fire. If some of your own characters are in the way of your flame fingers, they'll get burned as well. Okay, so let's have... Let's see, this one's got nine, six, three. Let's go ahead and use a spell and use Mage Bolt on him. And he's dead. Okay, this guy, let's go ahead and attack him. Kill him. Erevis, let's go on up and attack. Use a ranged weapon. If you're five, he's got four hit points left. Let's go ahead and use our spell to mage bolt. This arrow that you see flying is kind of big. We'll have to fix that as well. Um, let's go up and attack. Ha! Ah, so we got him. And we picked up a light crossbow and 
a heolite luminous potion. We can give the right crossbow. No, nope, mage can't use that. Can a cleric use it? No. Okay. So I think we'll go ahead and stop here at this point and we'll continue in our next one.